Hi everybody! Today I'm going to be working in this book, the Critical Role box Machina book, um, and it's a new one to me. I've been really wanting to colour in it. Um, I really love the TV show. I haven't watched the podcasts or um, the online version of the Vox Machina story, but I really did love the TV show, so I've been dying to colour in this book. And as my theme for the month is ravens, there's a really nice raven picture in here that I thought would do very well. Um, this is by Dark Horse Books, and there is a list of there's a list there of all the artists, but I don't, I can't find it saying uh, which artist drew which picture. So unfortunately, I can't tell you which artist drew the picture we'll be working on. But it's one of those from the list in the front. This is the one we'll be working on here. And this is Vax and the Raven Queen. And um, his character is kind of a roguey sort of sneaky character. And the Raven Queen, basically, she's the goddess of death. Um, and he ends up making a pact with her and she, he's kind of her champion um, but it's it's a long story <laughs> but that, that's that's the gist of it and while I was looking up inspiration pictures to get some idea of how to colour it I came across one by an artist called Jenny Dolphin on Twitter and it was awesome I thought it was really nice it worked really well and what it was was basically monochrome apart from the skin yeah basically monochrome apart from the skin even the background all in like shades of blue and white with loads of like watercolor effects going on i'm not sure if it was watercolor or digital but there was loads of uh, those kind of watercolor effects that i love going on lots of spattering so i thought maybe i could do something along those lines i have had a little practice here down the bottom and it does seem to be working okay i think it's one of those ideas that's either going to work yeah really really well or it's going to be a spectacular failure so <laughs> come along and we'll find out which one it is if you're watching this then hopefully it's worked um so first what i'm going to do is just basically to remind myself not to color the skin i'm going to give his skin a base coat of marker and this is eggshell white the ahuhu marker i'm just going to give his skin a base coat of it because i did print out i scanned as much as i could and i printed out a little practice sheet and i ended up painting over his skin which is not what i want to do so i'm just gonna give his skin a bit of a coat of marker mainly to remind myself not to color it the raven queen she wears a white porcelain mask and she has really pale skin and i haven't quite figured out how to color that yet so i'm going to try and leave it white uh, hopefully that will work there we go, that's his skin, just giving the base coat with a marker. Seems to be a little bit patchy on this paper, but I wouldn't worry too much about that. We can always clear that when we go in with pencils. And I'm just going to go over his hair as well. I'm going to give that a, a base coat of warm grey 4, that's also the Yahoo. And everything else I'm going to do in the shades of blue, except for the, the Raven Queen skin, which will, I'll try to make some kind of pale. Maybe even white, I don't know. I haven't quite figured out how to colour her skin yet. There we go, that's his skin all done. And the colour I was using as my base for what I've done down here, that is a common watercolour. No, it's called indigo, that one there. It's a little bit beaten up. The lid did get stuck at one point and the tube got a little bit twisted as I tried to undo it. But yeah, that's the one that I'm using. And I'm just giving him a base coat of that. Okay, I'm just going to give him a base coat of that indigo colour. Thinking I might, thinking about it, I might go and do the blade of his knife with like a silver, silver sharpie or a silver paint just to have that stand out as well. Stabbing with a paper towel there to give a bit of a faded effect and the way i had it working better down here although it did end up being quite pale is actually putting water onto the paper first not tons not super tons of water because the the paper is holding up it has wrinkled but i don't want to go too crazy and end up ripping the paper or something and it did seem to blend and kind of spread out a lot better if i put water onto the paper first so might go with that You can get some nice effects with watercolour if while, while it's wet you dab it with a paper towel and lift off some of the colour, it ends up working quite well. Right, his arms are coming out in front of his body so I want to make the colour there 
Leute. And then we can shade it to give a lot more contrast in there. Make that look as if it's coming towards us. That's another thing you can do. If you drop clean water, once your watercolor's down, if you drop on clean water, that will kind of spread out and make some nice effects sometimes, like we've got going on there now. Behind his hand, that'll want to be. I'm forgetting to wet the paper first. <laughs> Seems to work better if I do that in this book. It's not watercolour paper. Again, most colouring books are not, but you can try and get a few little effects going on. So yeah, I know we're going to be shading on top of pencils. I'm trying to put the darker colour where the shadows would most likely be. Just sure. Sure, it's a cape, isn't it? Yeah, of course it is. Yeah, under his cape. Try and blend it out a bit into those lighter areas. Again, this isn't the most interesting to watch, so by now you've probably noticed that I've most likely sped up or cut out some of this. But essentially all I'm doing right now is laying down this, this kind of base colour of the indigo. I'm trying to get a few watercolour effects going on because I want those to be showing through the pencil. Like I've got happening down here with the kind of blobby bloom effect showing. And this paint is the, this particular colour, the indigo I found. It is pretty good for the, the granulation and the bloom effects. It does work quite well. It's not specifically for that. I know there are paints that are specifically made to be gran granulating paints. But it's not one of those, but it does work really well.
I got a little splodges of blue onto the lady's mask there as I was trying to do a bit of spattering effect but I think I, I work that in and make it into the shadow on a white mask no problem the background is all going to be kind of this kind of same watercolor effect as well but I haven't quite uh, worked it out how to do it yet so so these marks won't matter I'm planning on making pretty dark when it comes behind his shoulder so I'm going to fade this blue out towards the top to get a, make his shoulder a bit lighter so there's more of a contrast between his shoulder and the wings So we are distressing the paper quite a lot doing this so I thought well I don't really want to work into it too much with the watercolours and stress the paper even more so I'm going to try shading with the um, mostly with the pencils on top but I'm going to try and use my watercolour effects kind of techniques that I use just to shade on top so it looks hopefully it looks as if I've painted the whole figure with the watercolours Again, his hand is coming out closer to us. So I'm going to darken behind there. And then lighten. his hand comes towards us dark there behind his hips so we'll line that edge as well just fill in so behind there with a the darker colour a nice effect. Am I leave that in?
Okay, just get this area behind her shoulder. His shoulder are pretty dark. Pretty dark base. Drop on some water there, try and get some effects going. I'm not going to be going for absolutely realistic feathers or anything like that. Okay, on my reference picture, the lady's wings were quite pale and they, they seem to bring in a bit of this kind of cerulean blue colour. The tips were really dark. And fade it to a more of a cerulean blue colour and then into of a more light indigo at the top. So I'll try and get that going on. I don't know how successful that will be, but I will give it a go. at the moment that is the same kind of colour as the, the inside of her wings there but hopefully once we've shaded the inside of the wings with a bit of black that will look different and stand out a bit more so yeah coming out here she seemed to have a bit more of this indigo blue colour which will work quite well to make these feathers these kind of floating feathers look darker and then it came into more of a light indigo heading up towards the top there Let's make that work yeah, I think so And then the bottom stuff.
We'll do the same with this other wing here.
okay the lady herself in the background is a lot paler in the picture i'm using for reference and i i'll try and link that down in the description if anybody does want to see the picture that i was using for reference but yeah she is kind of pale in the background So I'm going to give her, she is very pale in the background, so I'm going to give her quite a light coat of indigo. I'll maybe bring in a bit more of the cerulean blue. And when I go onto the shading, I'll try and make these feathers in her hair a lot, a lot darker. In my reference picture, the background fades out from a really light kind of cerulean blue around the characters, fading out to really kind of dark around the outside, but with some white splashing and stuff like that. So I've mixed a bit of Chinese white with the cerulean blue to bring in around them. a few nice effects Let's bring in the dark corners So yeah, this is <laughs> actually getting a little bit scary now because it's a, one of my favourite pictures in the book and I really have no idea how this is going to work or even if it will work at all. So we're just going for it here.
missed a bit of her hair out there. At the moment I'm just kind of painting over these corner designs we've got going on here because I have some sort of a vague idea of doing them in silver. Maybe a little bit of paper collage going on in the middles. I don't know. I haven't quite I haven't quite figured that out yet, but when it comes to it, I don't tend to plan very much to be honest with you. I have a, a main idea or a vague idea of what I'd like to get accomplished maybe but beyond that <laughs> it's try it and see most of the time. Most every page is somewhat of an experiment I think because I love to try out new things although it is sometimes a little bit scary. Oh, I was really scared about Scott starting this page, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> My partner said to me that last night, he said, you know, just go for it. You can sit there for weeks just worrying about starting it, so just go for it. See what you come up with. It's kind of scary on these big books, though, because you know that you can't, you can't really scan it in to... Uh, To have a spare copy in case you do mess up. I did scan in as much as I could I think from there to about there I managed to scan in to have a little bit of a practice sheet earlier. And when I did practice I was trying to get this same kind of monochrome effect but with all the hole markers and I was really struggling so I thought no I'll go with my original idea just have at it with the watercolours, see what we can come up with. So that's what we've done. And it's not looking too bad, to be perfectly honest with you so far. Although I think it's the shading that will make it in the end. There are quite a lot of kind of uh, splashy effects and stuff like that in the in the um, reference picture. Good thing about backgrounds like this is that yeah, it doesn't matter about all those splashes I made around the outside earlier. They're all going to be covered up now. I've gone over the lines in a few places, but I think we'll be able to fix that. And this is all just completely random, <laughs> blobbing on colours. Trying to get a few nice effects going on. I 
to go. Kind of, but we do seem to have a <laughs> quite nice effect going on, so I might leave it there.
you know, this raven here and the floating feathers, I don't like paint them. Give them a base coat of the Prussian blue, which is quite a dark blue, but a different shade than the one we've been using in the background. So let's see if we can go with that. Do a few splashes over that top corner. I didn't get to. Okay, well, right now that probably looks really messy <laughs> and awful. But I think that once I've got the shading on there, that's all going to come together. 